Welcome back once again, peoples of this world. Laszlo Montgomery here with yet another good and decent Chengyu for your collezione. This one is useful to know in our day and age where everyone carrying a cell phone can act like an intrepid journalist catching criminals, celebrities, and politicians in the act of engaging in all kinds of illegal or hypocritical acts. Now, I don't regularly feature 12 character Chinese sayings. In fact, I can't recall when I ever featured one. So let's break it down and see if we can figure it out. And it goes like this. As Cheng Yu's go, that's quite a mouthful. So let me introduce it two characters at a time, since yeah, I know you're all busy and don't need to sit through a character-by-character -character analysis. Jie Shu means only allowed or only permitted. And a Zhou Guan, well, a Zhou in China's olden days was what you called a prefecture. And a Guan is an official. So, it's a high-ranking official who worked for the local government. Fang Huo means to set fire to something or commit arson. Jie Shu Zhou Guan Fang Huo only allow government official to commit arson. And now for the second part of the Chinese saying. Bu xu bai xing dian deng. Bu xu means to not allow or not permitted. The bai xing or hundred surnames is a term used to express all the Chinese people who are not government officials. Since back in the time of this story, at least, you could, you, know, you could pretty much almost divide up the entire Chinese population into 100 different surnames. And that Hundred surnames term just became another way of saying the Chinese people, the masses, the Bai Xing, the hundred surnames, or Lao Bai Xing, the old hundred surnames. And to Dian Deng means to light a lantern or a lamp. And you string all six of those characters together and you get only allow government official to commit arson, not permit the people to light a lantern. Hmm. I'm getting a very strong Boris Johnson, Nancy Pelosi, Bill de Blasio, and Gavin Newsom vibe right now. The story behind this one doesn't go back that far. I'm usually mining the Zhou, Han, and Jin dynasties for all these golden nuggets, but our Chengyu for this time only goes back as far as the Northern Song, 960 to 1127. And during that time of great poets, painters, and calligraphers, there lived one Lu Yo, he had the ill fortune to have been born in 1125, the final years of the Song Dynasty when the capital was at Kaifeng. By this time, the Jurchens from in and around Manchuria were leaning hard on the imperial court and making all kinds of horrible demands. And then after they milked the royal treasury for all it contained, they went in and smashed the dynasty to smithereens and carted off the whole royal family to the coldest, most miserable part of Heilongjiang that they knew of. And there they lived out the rest of their days, the famous Jingkang incident from Chinese history. So Lu Yo grew up in these troubled times. Now, despite all that, he went on to become perhaps the most prolific literatus of the dynasty, writing more than 11,000 poems. And like his contemporary, whose life overlapped that of Lu Yo, Yue Fei, he was considered one of the great patriots of his time, and throughout his life he called for the Song to rally its armies and retake the north of the country, lost to the Jurchens, who had established their own Jin dynasty. And like Yue Fei, Lu Yo also one day ran afoul of Emperor Gaozong's evil chancellor, Qin Hui. Well, after living a long and eventful life, Lu Yo retired to a quiet house by a lake, which he named the Abode of the Aging Scholar. And there he wrote a book called, coincidentally enough, Notes from the Abode of an Aging Scholar, Lao Xue An Bi Ji. And in it, he included various notes on local traditions and ancient books he had read, as well as Plenty of personal observations, memories, and strange stories he had heard from family or friends. And this is one such story. There once was a man named Tian Deng. He was a tyrannical and egotistical man who had managed to get himself appointed a prefect. One of the first things he did upon taking up his post was to put a ban on the use of the character Deng, 
which was his first name. In ancient China, there was a tradition to put a taboo on using the characters of the reigning emperor's first name out of respect for his majesty. But this person, Tian Deng, well, he was merely a regional official, a prefect, and certainly had no right to call for this taboo against using the character Deng. This was highly unusual, and people thought, jeez, who is this guy being so presumptuous as that? Nevertheless, everyone who lived under Tian Deng's jurisdiction was not allowed to speak or write this character Deng. And not only that, Tian Deng then put a taboo on any written character that had the same pronunciation as the word Deng. Not even the emperor, the son of heaven himself, not even he dared to do such a thing as that. Now, if you check the Pleco app or the Liang Chiu Dictionary, you'll see there's about five characters that are all pronounced Deng in the first tone. And a couple of them are pretty common and part of everyday speech. Nevertheless, whoever dared to say Deng out loud would be charged with disrespecting the prefect. If Tian Deng was feeling forgiving that day, eh, the one who got caught uttering the forbidden syllable using the character Deng in the first tone, well, that might be caned or beaten. And if Tian Deng was in a lousy mood, the accused might even be sentenced to prison or executed. Many county officials met this fate due to unfortunate slips of the tongue. Not long after Tian Deng took office, the annual Lantern Festival rolled around. Now, the general word for any light or lamp in Chinese is Deng, which of course fell under Tian Deng's taboo. And as you can imagine, it became nearly impossible to plan the upcoming Lantern Festival without being able to mention the word Deng. According to the traditions of that prefecture, it was left up to the prefect to host the annual Lantern Festival gala, which lasted for three days. The staff at the prefect's residence wanted to put out notices advertising the celebrations, as they had done every year before. But this year, with the taboo on using any character with the pronunciation of Deng, it was severely straining their ability to get the word out to the masses. If they wrote the word for lanterns, also pronounced Deng, they'd be punished for breaking the taboo. And if they didn't write lanterns, well... There was concern that it would confuse the people and they wouldn't comprehend the meaning of the notification. People were guaranteed to feel confused. So what to do? Eventually, after careful consideration, the officials decided to replace the character for Lantern, Dung, with the character for Fire, Hua. Therefore, when they hung these announcements all over town, it didn't say the prefect will be putting on a lantern show for the town lasting three days, as was the wording used in years past. Instead, this time the advertisements announced the prefect will be setting fire, or fang huo, to the town for three days. As soon as the notices were plastered in conspicuous locations where the people were sure to see it, there was immediate confusion regarding what this meant. Based on Tian Deng's well-known personality and tendency to give ridiculous orders, no one put it past him to actually set fire to the town. The result was that there was a mass exodus from the town as people hurried to flee what they thought would be a three-day-long fire. And believe you me, a lot of the townsfolk grumbled that they weren't even allowed to have lights or lanterns for this year's festival because of Tian Deng's taboo on the word Deng. They argued about why was it that they couldn't light lanterns for this year's festival, but no one stops the prefect from setting fire to the whole town. News spread fast throughout the entire prefect and surrounding counties about the lunacy being called for by the government officials. And from this, we get the saying of, the prefect commits arson, while the townsfolk cannot even light lanterns. And in no time at all, this became an oft-used saying that satirized those in power who committed all sorts of wanton activities while the common folk weren't even able to go about their daily lives. It literally translates to, The prefect commits arson while the townsfolk cannot even light lanterns. It's the perfect chengyu to lampoon any person in power who disregards certain rules that they themselves call for or should be enforcing. Well, the ordinary people live under the harsh restrictions. 
with the recent COVID madness all over the world, and more places than the UK and the US, plenty of government officials were making life unpleasant for the citizens with all the draconian restrictions about social gatherings, but they'd be caught red-handed breaking the rules. Lockdowns for thee, but not for me. When your boss demands you show up on time, but they're always late, 只是周官方活,不需百姓点灯, your spouse rags on you for not following certain rules in the relationship that they flaunt all the time. Anytime somebody hops on top of a soapbox and starts yammering on about rules, laws, conduct, and then they get caught on video being a hypocrite. Yeah, we're not too fond of this kind of thing. And folks back in the 12th century, they weren't either. Do as I say, not as I do. And with that, we're going to close the window, bring down the curtain, and turn out the lights until next time, when we meet again on the avenue. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a nice, big shout-out all the way to the other side of the Atlantic to reliable and irreplaceable Emma over in the teacup, Cheng Yu Yan Jiu Zhongxin, what would we do without you, Emma? This here's Laszlo Montgomery signing off from hot and sunny Los Angeles, California, beseeching you to consider coming back next time for another useful Cheng Yu here at the Chinese Sayings Podcast.